how to fly your kite in the surf. Probably one of the most crucial things that you we could, we could go over. And there's it's a lot of detail and a lot of different things. It all depends on whether the wind's onshore, sideshore, offshore. But it all follows one key thing: is to get your kite into the ideal kite flying position. What is that ideal kite flying position? Well, it's having your kite at about a 45 degree angle. Uh, it, having your kite at a 45 degree angle gives you a margin of error. It pulls you in the direction that you want, giving you uh, an ability to make a little bit, bit of mistakes so the kite can fall without going into the water um, and still pulling you where you want to go. In addition to having it at that 45 degree angle, you're gonna line up the trailing edge of the kite with the swell line itself. This keeps you on the wave. If your kite's too far behind, it'll pull you out the back. If it's too far forward, you can easily pass it and it'll fall in the water. So that ideal kite flying position is a 45 degree angle with the trailing edge of the kite lining up with the swell. If, if it has any bit of wiggle room, it's better to have your kite a little bit further forward than further back. Flying your kite in the waves follows one simple principle. The kite is always one step ahead of you. If you're at the top of the wave, your kite is at the bottom. When you're dropping in, your kite's bottom turning. When you bottom turn, your kite's coming off the top. And what that's doing is pulling you throughout the turn. If you ever find yourself in a position where you're going fast, slowing down, or you know anything but a smooth, even control, it's because your timing with your kite is not following it perfectly. The way you turn the kite affects the way you turn. Uh, for example, if you do a, a wider turning arc with your kite, your turn's going to have a wider turning arc. If you do a tighter turning arc with your kite, you're going to do a tighter turning arc. And it's very easy to practice this in flat water, just doing S turns downwind. And the moment you have this mastered, you can easily translate it into the surf. The amount that you fly your kite really depends on the wind angle itself. More onshore winds requires a more dramatic kite flying technique. Because the kite naturally wants to go to the edge of the wind window, you have to more aggressively fly the kite back to that ideal kite flying position to ride down the line. The more side shore the wind becomes, the edge of the wind window shifts, keeping the kite further back towards the wave, closer to that ideal kite flying position. When it's a side shore wind direction, your kite flying becomes a bit more subtle. You don't need to do those big, large, aggressive turns anymore. You're just doing subtle repositioning, giving yourself power by moving the kite and getting your kite back to that ideal kite flying position. Again, that ideal kite flying position is at a 45 degree angle with the trailing edge in line with the swell of, of the wind. What becomes a little bit more difficult is when we go into offshore wind conditions. Offshore wind con conditions requires the least amount of kite flying, but the most amount of edge control and positioning on, on the wave. Because the edge of the wind window now becomes so far back, you're now fighting the kite and positioning the kite for edge control. Sheeting out, pushing on the tail, and getting that kite to surge further forward and if it's really offshore, even position yourself further out into the flats of the wave just to get that kite back to that ideal kite flying position. Let's talk about edge control. Edge control is a great way to reposition your kite in the wind window, either by loading up, putting pressure on, on the lines to get your kite further forward, or releasing that pressure to get your kite to drift or fall back in the wind, wind window. The whole point of this is to reposition your kite without having to fly it. There's a quick light wind technique when you're in the surf, the wind gets a little bit light, lighter and you need that little extra juice to get you going to get your first turn. It's a very simple thing. You kite loop your kite. It still follows all the same principles of having your kite one step ahead of you, but you get the added power of bringing your kite through the wind window and more through the power zone and giving you that extra oomph to get you moving and begin your 
ride. You can see here by looping the kite in the beginning of the ride, it gives you that extra oomph by flying your kite through the power zone while still having your kite one step ahead of you. Flying your kite in the waves is by far one of the most difficult things that you can do with so many variables and details that we just can't cover today. So if you want to go more in, in, into this, make sure to check out RioStevensCoaching.com. I have a lot more info on there. And if you really want to step up your, your games, check out one of the kite advent, adventures that I provide. And we can go over this in person as well as work on, on, on it in some of the most beautiful, remote, and unbelievable kite destinations in the world.